less formal presentation tonight. I'm going to be sitting here because I'm going to be driving, doing a little bit of a demo, kind of show and tell on a few different prototyping and wireframe tools. So, <clears throat> first, quickly, a show of hands, you know, who has not ever built a wireframe before? A few people? All right, cool. That's good to know. So, uh, secondly, how many people have used Visio until you're blurry in the eyes? <laughs> So that's good. You know, we've got some uh, good experience there too. So uh, we're just going to kind of talk a little bit about the the wireframing, you know, the user experience. I know that Interact is a lot about different roles on the design teams, and you know there's usually you know, and I know they're trying to bridge the gap between dev and information architecture and graphic designs and stuff. But I thought this one was pretty good about trying to break down the wall, tear down the wall. And so I think that's part of our goal here. We all need to work together. So I'm sure there's more than one wall we can break down. But I wanted to uh, talk a little bit about the wireframes and the design process. So just to get clear up front, I'm not going to talk about how to do a, a fabulous wireframe tonight. In fact, what I'm going to show you instead is really quick and dirty stuff because I can only build so much of a wireframe in about 15 minutes. So I'm going to try and hit some highlights of things and try and show some pros and cons, some strengths and weaknesses from some of the tools. But from our perspective, the wireframes, you know, have a role in the design process. And I know everybody probably has a little bit different design process. And you may have your ideal dream design process, which you probably rarely get to follow through on. But you may even have one of those agile uh, design processes where you get to iterate every 14 minutes and chase your tail around like a dog. If you're lucky enough to get through that. But I was kind of hitting the highlights here. Um, hopefully, you're going to, when we're building the wireframes, you're going to rely on discovery and research information to kind of clarify who we're designing for. So that's really critical information that's going to drive how we build the wireframes in the first place. The wireframes serve several purposes. We can define control, the layout, and behavior. I like to use them to capture the design rationale so that other people following on later, or even myself three or four months later when I've sort of forgotten what it was we were thinking when we did this, kind of document a little bit about what was going on in our minds at the time, some of the trade-offs, some of that kind of information. So they can also serve as a way if you start getting into the little bit higher fidelity, the mid-fidelity, the high-fidelity stuff, that you can test drive the navigation, you can see how they're going to behave, you can see the other, the other uh, controls actually work. And so it can serve as a living design document if you treat it that way on your team, if that makes sense. So that's kind of how I see wireframes working into the design process, kind of short and sweet. So your design process might look like this. If you just decide to do that. So I'm sure nobody <laughs> here has ever been guilty of that. I know certainly our teams haven't been. No, 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 never. So, so the wireframes are going to try and give people a sense of how it's all going to work, what it's going to look like a little bit. You know, we're not going to venture into visual design. And in fact, I'm purposely going to keep it black and white tonight, even, uh, with the exception of a couple of images that I'm going to throw in, because they're easier to work with. So again, you know, what, is, what are we talking about tonight, and why? This is a tools-focused discussion. I'm going to pick three tools out of a whole bunch you could possibly use. Uh, we're going to, again, focus on the strengths and weaknesses and to try and give you guys a sense of some lessons learned that I've got having worked with all of these tools. And again, I'm not going to show you how to build a great wireframe. It's going to be kind of somewhat the opposite. So any questions as we cruise in? Tools of choice. Of course, they're sketching. You can always do wireframes on paper. Uh, a lot of people think you just can't do that in the 21st, 22nd century, whatever it is. But uh, you still can do that to get things down really quick. And then there's other tools that kind of take it to the next level of fidelity. So uh, you might have used several of these, maybe only one or two of them. Uh, the ones we're going to focus on tonight are the ones in Bold, Visio, Axure, and Sketchflow. So there's a lot of other ones by a lot of other different makers, and you just have a world's worth of choices. I'm sure I've only touched on less than half of them here in this short list. So there's a lot to choose from. So some of the things to think about 
And this is where some experience working with different kinds of teams and different kinds of customers and all kind of comes into play. And I know this is really odd that from a user experience standpoint, we're going to ask how our own work is going to be used. But that should be one of the first questions you get to ask. And so the idea is who is going to digest what we're creating? Who is our audience? And there's probably a couple of different roles. I mean, the visual designer, if you're on that kind of team, is going to take your work and skin it. And you have developers who are ultimately going to look to your work to define how it's going to behave. Your customer may see the wireframes, especially if they're interactive, so they get a sense of how it's going to work. <coughs> so when you think about it, I mean, it could be something really static and quick that you're working with a very iterative team and all of your work is very preliminary and it's going to be very internal. Or you could be something that you know up front, this is going to serve the purpose of an of a, of interactive prototype that we're going to use for a usability study. We're planning to build an interactive wireframe to test out a couple of navigation options, and we know we're going to put it in front of people, so it has to be interactive, it has to function. And so that's something to consider if you're working with a customer that's going to see the wireframes. Are they going to want to provide you feedback on it? How are you going to get that feedback? Are you all going to be in the same room? Are they going to be remote? <coughs> Are they going to even, you know, is this going to be a meeting where they're talking to you on the phone, or are you going to send it off to them and they're going to get back to you in a couple of days? So all of those kinds of things are things to consider when you're picking your tool and the ways you're going to deliver your wireframes, and et cetera. So some of your customers' expectations of what they're going to need to see in order to move the project from start to at least finished as far as the wireframes go. Sometimes if you have enough experience to draw on, you can just have some early conversations with some clients and customers and understand that, no, they're going to be the kind that really wants to see it work. Uh, I don't care what you tell me now, so I'm not <coughs> just going to keep this in my hip pocket, but I bet we better go with something interactive because that's just kind of in my gut feel. Another thing to consider is what your development team and the other people on, on your team are using for tools. So if you know it's going to be a Silverlight application, for example, the Expression Blend tool suite with Sketchflow maybe makes for a better place to start, but that can be a head start for the development team. And you know, there's a few other options that have the sort of code handoff capabilities. But not every one of them does. Some of them are just considered kind of throwaway tools. So another thing to consider is what other diagrams you might need. Uh, are you going to have to build a site map if you're doing a classic website? Or are you going to do a flow diagram, a storyboard, something along those lines? Some tools have those features, some tools don't. If you want to work all in one tool, something else to consider. So, any other thoughts, questions? Thoughts on that? Okay, just feel free to fry them out. I'm going to try and cruise through stuff because we've got a, a lot of things to go through. So, with that, I am going to switch into one of the apps here, <clears throat> and we're going to have a little fun tonight. We are going to build the same wireframe three different times in three different apps. Okay, so my idea is we're going to have some fun. I think what I'm going to do is see if I can squeeze over here for just one minute. Can you tell me if there's, oh, there is at least a marker over here on the board. So what I have in mind... <laughs> Just for just for enough to just scribble something up here. That's it. So, what I have in mind is a pizza website. So we're going to do a really simple pizza website, and I'll tell you what I have in mind, and then help, you guys are going to help me uh, chime in. So we're going to have a home page, and under that we're going to have a menu, and then we're going to have a health page because you know every poorly designed website needs a health page. <laughs> And we're going to have two different kinds of menus. We're going to have a pizza menu and we're going to have a salad menu. Okay? So that is kind of the gist of things. So I thought I'd throw that up there so you have a visual idea of kind of what we're going to build, a simple four-page or so site. And we have, uh, you know, kind of a scenario where one of your friends is starting a small business and wants you to help them design it and get it going. And, of course, they want you to bring to bear all of your cool, sexy web 3.0 kind of technology and stuff. So we're going to try and build a little bit of fun stuff into this. But we're going to start out with Visio, which is the, uh, 
least interactive, I guess, of the tools we're going to play with tonight. And so I'm just going to kind of, again, try and fly through this, but I hope not to lose you along the way, especially those of you who have not worked with Visio before. I'm going to create a new Visio document. And Visio is a, a really broad-based drawing tool, and I'm going to open up a wireframe diagram <coughs> from scratch. And really the benefit of telling it that I want to open up a wireframe diagram is it gives me some tools over here on the left-hand side. I have toolbars and dialogues and controls and such, and I'm going to use those as we go through things. <coughs> so, so the idea here is that uh, Visio can you can basically draw anything in Visio, right? And so we're just going to use it to draw a wireframe, and and so that makes it open ended. It's one of these tools where you could draw anything and everything. Site maps can be drawn there, workflows, flow diagrams, all different kinds of things. It's pretty much open ended. <laughs> So if we're going to start with our site, probably the first thing we want to do is come up with a name. So we know we're going to have a logo or something fun like that. What I'm going to do here is pick up uh, some shapes that I have. One of them's called Smart Hand to Drawn Shapes. And so this, uh, this kind of gives it that sketch look, which sometimes is handy for people because they think it's not too finished. And uh, that can be really valuable in your wireframe process. So, so the first thing I'm going to do here is grab some text. Does anybody have a particularly fun name in mind for their pizza website? What would be the name of this pizza joint that your friend No? Because I was thinking this one would be good. Pokey's Pizza with really poor delivery. Right. Really slow, never gets there. <coughs> All right, so we'll try that one, and we are just going to grab a box here and draw a quick logo. Let's do any more than that for it. All right, <clears throat> so we also have, if we look under some uh, toolbars in Visio, we can draw a menu bar. Just throw this out here like this. Scroll up a little bit. Oops. And we... Now my mouse is not covered. That can make this very interesting. Okay, so we have the, the menu page. So the first one we know is going to be home because we looked over there. And then we know that the uh, next one, or the last one here, is going to be help page. <clears throat> All right. So this is one of the things where now 